If you, like everyone else in the 2000s, owned a Nintendo DS, then you're probably familiar with the Professor Layton series. If you haven't played it, it's probably difficult to understand how this simple puzzle game managed to spawn five sequels, two spin-offs, a crossover, and a fully animated feature-length movie that is not very good, but I watch every year on Christmas Eve for some reason. The answer to anyone who has played the series is pretty obvious. Layton's presentation is second to none, with fantastic music, lovable characters, and this amazing 1930s Linclair art style that's just more charming than a prostitute three months behind on rent. However, just as the Mayans predicted, the world, and my borderline sexual attraction to the series, came to a tragic end in the year 2012, Anno Domini, Year of Our Lord, when the series clawed its way into the THIRD DIMENSION. Jesus Christ, he looks like a man disguised as himself. This is a classic example of graphics versus aesthetics title drop, where people mistake more polygons for more purdy. Yes, this version is probably easier to animate and has 33 more dimensions than his 2D counterpart, but he also frightens me. The leap from 2D sprites to 3D models is always tough, and it wasn't uncommon for there to be a sort of avant-garde period during the transition. Pretty much the only games I can think of to make the leap gracefully is the Pokemon series and maybe Dragon Ball. Basically, aesthetics are the way something looks, feels, and sounds, and graphics are how many mainframes you had to hack in order to make it. But for the purposes of this video, I want to focus just on the visual aspect. Now, in my opinion, a strong aesthetic is far more valuable than good graphics, because the threshold for good graphics get higher and higher every year, whereas a strong art style ages much more slowly, if at all. I remember a friend of mine telling me about the first time he played Metal Gear Solid back in 1998, and his first thought when he saw Solid Snake was, holy shit, it's like controlling a movie. Obviously Snake's polygonal body and shadowy eyes have aged about as gracefully as the man himself, whereas games with a strong art style tend to have a much longer half-life, which might explain why Reggie felt the need to remaster Metal Gear Solid much sooner than something like Spyro the Dragon. In the current hellish landscape of 2019, Anno Domini, Year of Our Lord, the battle between graphics and aesthetics rages on most notably in the world of Disney remakes. From what I can tell, there's been an especially negative reaction to the live-action Lion King, and I think the reason for that is... is that it, it's still just animated. Both of these movies are exactly as not live-action as each other, except one is leaning heavily into the hacked mainframe end of the spectrum, whereas this one is much more on the pretty picture side of things. For example, here are two pictures of Simba and Nala. Now, as you can see, the 1994 version is, ironically, much more lively. The characters look distinct, they're capable of displaying a wide array of emotions, and are generally just much more pleasant to look at. The newer version, while definitely more lifelike, it's quite difficult to tell the difference between the two characters. In fact, I think this might just be a picture of two lion cubs off Google Images. For me personally, I think the unwavering commitment to realism really holds the film's aesthetic back. Even just colour correcting the palette to the originals makes it way more visually interesting. I thought this was a video game channel, you weedy, spud-eating cunt. Okay, so, ouch. My feelings. Now, none of this isn't to say there's anything wrong with just doubling down on realism and stuffing so many polygons and texture values into your game it could qualify for a passport. Uncharted 4, Red Dead Redemption 2, Resident Evil 7, these are all games that aim for a photorealistic style, and they look great. But you may have noticed that all these games are sequels, because their original attempt... not so much. It also doesn't mean you necessarily have to pick one over the other. Red Dead has its whole cowboy thing going on, and Cyberpunk 2077 has this kinda... weird future lo-fi vibe that's just impossible to describe in one word. But generally speaking, if I had to choose between one or the other, I'd choose the other. It can be anything from bold shapes to clean line art, or even just a vibrant colour palette. Team Fortress 2 is a great example of a game with poor graphics but a really strong aesthetic. The game is over a decade old, but it's hardly aged a day because it looks exactly how it's supposed to. It's got this super clean mid-19th century pin-up style that makes everything look like an old Coca-Cola commercial, and the characters all have unique features right down to their ears and eyes. Like, you can tell which character you're looking at just by the silhouette. However, what you might not know is that early on in development, the game had a much more realistic military visual style, and, to use the technical term, looked like dog shit. Both of these are running on the same engine and have the exact same graphical fidelity. The only difference is one has a much stronger aesthetic than the other. Hot dog, dead dog. 
And yeah, this might all seem obvious to you. You're, you're probably thinking, why would anyone choose graphics over aesthetics? And also, my god, you're so handsome! See, there was a time around 2006, with the launch of the seventh console generation, where the gaming industry was far more focused on milking every teraflop for what it was worth. With the phenomenal cosmic power granted by the new beefed up hardware, there was a sort of mad dash to see who could make the most realistic looking game possible. And while games like Mirror's Edge does its best to take advantage of both realism and style, for the most part, what we got was just a lot of the colour brown. People even got mad on the internet about Wind Waker, one of the prettiest games ever made, because it wasn't realistic enough. Nowadays, with the sheer volume of games being released between the AAA and indie scene, I feel like we've got something for everyone. With photorealism, pixel art, and everything in between, the industry is in a pretty good place, variety-wise. I think it's kind of amazing that something like this can have modern interpretations like this, and like this. Video games are cool, video games are pretty. If video games were a girl, she'd be out of my league. Well, boys and girls, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. If you enjoyed it, I'd appreciate a like or even a subscribe if you're into that kind of thing. You can even follow me on Twitter if you like incoherent, incessant rambling. Let me know your favourite felony in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time when our topic will be... A brief history of pottery techniques during the Bronze Age. Ugh, that sounds awful. Could probably skip that one to be honest. <laughs>